55 yards around the edge. Here's the problem with Robbie Ashford. Way too quick to leave the pocket. One half seconds before he get ready to take off. The pocket's clean, and instead he leaves to his right as opposed to attacking north and south. Robbie Ashford is a dynamic athlete that can do an awful lot for your offense, but he has to be more willing to attack the line of scrimmage vertically. If he does that today, he can make life difficult on LSU's pass rush. Had a rushing touchdown, 46 rushing yards in his first career start. There was an injury on kickoff coverage for LSU, and is the backup cornerback, Seven Banks, who was a fixture playing at Ohio State over the last four years. And you can see the medical staff out to check on Seven Banks. You see Seven Banks coming in and just taking a hit on the head and really scary there. As he kind of drops his head, and then he also makes contact with the turf as well. Just a really scary hit there for the senior. I'm bringing out the cart, as you see, Brian Kelly concerned for Seven Banks, the grad student. He started the last couple years for Ohio State, grew up in Orlando, Florida, and then transferred to LSU and you can see the look of concern his teammates face is here it's a very scary injury to see his head make contact with a return man like that it's a stadium here at Auburn has gone silent with the reality of the situation with seven banks right now and as we have seen through the years they will follow the standard procedure oh, of making sure that he is secure and immobilized and taken off the field safely medical attention right to seven banks immediately but right now all you can do is sit back and pray and hope for the best Just so scary and kick off such a violent play. As has been a point of emphasis with the health and safety of players in recent years with many rules changes for that reason. And having been around the sport, the two of us, for years upon years and witnessing situations like this, the first thought you have is the family. Whether here in person at Auburn, his mom Andrea, his father Ray, he has a brother Marcel who played at Florida and then off to the NFL. But you can only imagine right now the concern for the family and as they watch Seven being tended to by the medical staff and everybody with just their thoughts and attention and prayers to give strength to this group that is being attentive to him to be able to do their jobs and care for this young man. Right now, Seven Banks is being carted off. The information that we can give you is that he was responsive. He was speaking to the medical staff that was attending to him and that he is going to be brought to East Alabama Medical Center. It's in Opelika, Alabama. That is the next town over from where we are here at Auburn at Jordan-Hare Stadium. And he will be taken care of there. Katie will keep us up to date on everything with seven banks. And what a horrible way to start a night of SEC football. And our prayers are with seven and his family, his mom Andrea, his father Ray, his brother Marcel. And we will keep you up to date as to his condition as best we can. Robbie Ashford's pass is batted back. That was Jay Ward getting in the face of Robbie Ashford. It's extremely difficult, uh, obviously, for LSU under the circumstances, having seen their teammate and brother just parted off. It's also extremely difficult for the Auburn Tigers, knowing that the injury kind of just took the life out of the building. It's tough to kind of ramp yourself up after that. So it's important for the coaches to make sure they reach the players in a situation like that so that they're focused on the game and the task at hand. 
Second down and 10. They go with the jet motion. This is Johnson. And Johnson goes ahead for three yards. Javarius Johnson. Again, the starting quarterback for Auburn is Robbie Ashford. Last week against Missouri in that very odd overtime win. He was 12 of 18, 127 yards passing, 46 yards rushing, and a touchdown. That was his first career start in for an injured T.J. Finley. Third down and seven now for Auburn. Ashford is going to get it complete for a first down to Coy Moore, the transfer from LSU, playing against his former teammates. Just a great route here, as you can see, attacking the leverage of the defender, Fouché, who's in for the start because Major Burns will miss. They find a quality matchup there, get the out route, and a great route there by Coy Moore to separate, be sudden, and an excellent throw from Robbie Ashford. Tank Bigsby runs right into that middle of the defensive line. Robbie Ashford can be a really good player, even at this point in his development, because of just how dynamic he is. He's so explosive running the football. He just has to understand that in this league, in the SEC, at the highest levels of college football, you cannot run around the defender, as you can see T.J. Finley on the sideline. He was the opening day starter, but is unavailable tonight and might not be back the rest of the year. Former quarterback at LSU, second and eight. Ashford with time, well covered downfield was Shedrick Jackson. Chick-fil-A impact players tonight. What do you got, Greg? And Auburn needs to find some playmakers off on offense. Robbie Ashford can be that, but it's obvious that it always runs through Tank Bigsby. He's excellent, one of the best running backs in America. John Samuel Shanker, the tight end. He's going to need to be very reliable. You've got a young quarterback who's going to lean heavily on the tight end. And then defensively, we just talked about Fouché making the start tonight in place of Major Burns. And also B.J. Ojolari, who's been in and out of the lineup, but could get a lot of work against an offensive line that's been up and down. Third down and eight. Four-man rush against Ashford. As he goes downfield, wide open, and gets it complete to Johnson. Johnson cuts back, spins, and scores. War Eagle starts the game. So many questions about this offense, and just like that, a 53-yard touchdown strike, Ashford to Javarius Johnson. Everybody looked at this Auburn offense. They said, can they really score? Can they get it done with Robbie Ashford and the way things have been going? Lackluster for much of last week. And then this, Greg. And how about it? All last week escaping horizontally and here on a big play, escaping vertically and finding Johnson for the touchdown. From the, the new Subway Series menu. The great throw on the run there from Robbie Ashford and a huge strike there for Auburn. That'll do a world for your quarterback's confidence early in this game. Here's a guy that's playing with confidence. LSU's Jaden Daniels with Josh Williams in the backfield. Daniels looking to extend and then he's brought down right away and it was Leota. Eku Leota, his ninth sack of his Auburn career. Guys, quick note, left guard Garrett Dellinger is not available this evening. He had surgery on Tuesday to fix a fracture in his hand. It was a little more invasive than expected, so doctors were hesitant to let him play tonight due to possibility of infection. He will be back next week, just unavailable tonight at left guard. And Katie, they've been piecing together that offensive line since week one with different combinations. They said that he got back to the line of scrimmage, so officially it's not a sack as Daniels goes incomplete looking for Mason Taylor. Jaden Daniels has been really good so far this year. 
especially using his legs, but has gotten better and better and better in each and every week and understanding how to get through his progression. Now, first opportunity for him to go into a hostile environment, and he immediately on the first drive faces a third and long with Auburn's defensive line pinning their ears back. They show pressure. It gets picked up on third and ten. Daniels, plenty of time, but it's off the hands of the true freshman tight end, Mason Taylor. Excellent protection by the LSU offensive line. Jaden Daniels had plenty of time to survey the field. The ball is just a little bit too far out in front of Mason Taylor. Ball just the tiniest bit inaccurate in the freshman tight end. Son of Jason Taylor couldn't reel it in. Jay Bramlett, transfer from Notre Dame, on to punt away. Keontae Scott, who was involved in that very scary opening special teams play, opening kickoff of the game, and it takes a good, fortunate LSU bounce. So Robbie Ashford's off to a good start. Who is he? Well, he grew up down the road in suburban Birmingham, was at the same Hoover High. But instead of staying in the SEC, he said, I'm going west. Went to Oregon, played football and baseball there. Never saw the field in football, but did play 20 games as an outfielder for the Ducks. And you know what, Greg? Happy birthday, young Robert. 20 years old today. He himself a nice present on that opening drive, didn't he? 53-yard touchdown strike to Johnson. Beautiful start from Auburn's offense. Clearly, Robbie Ashford picking up some confidence after the victory last week. There was some movement pre-snap. False start on the offense number six. It's a five-yard penalty. It remains first down. It's going to be difficult for Robbie Ashford here, as you see Brian Harson having to deal with some injuries to the center position. They're now on their third center of the year after losing Tate Johnson last week. Brandon Council, the left guard, is actually sliding in at center. He's a veteran player, has been around a long time. So this is a veteran group across the front that has had their fair share of ups and downs, but they like the starting five, especially with Council there kind of anchoring the middle of the offensive line. First and 15 after the penalty. Ashford throws it high and well beyond the intended target. That throw right there. You see Robbie Ashford yelling at the wide receiver. The wide receiver ran about a three-yard hitch. There's not a route in America that's going to have you run a three-yard hitch. So Robbie threw it a little bit more upfield. And as you can see, just not on the same page with the wide receiver who cut that route way short, and Robbie let him hear about it. Second and 15. Ashford, can he pick up a block and get to the outside edge as he is spun down at the 26-yard line? A big part of, of Robbie Ashford and this offense is going to be marrying up some of their run plays and using some boot action, trying to get to here. It's really well covered by LSU, but Robbie Ashford does offer you the ability to try to make something out of nothing. We'd love for him to be a little more decisive and would love for him not to take a hit but ultimately, it's a good job trying to at least get back to a more manageable third down. Third and 12 for Ashford. Three-man rush, and Ojolari gets free and tracks him down. B.J. Ojolari, one of the very best in the SEC, and Harold Perkins coming after him. And Ojolari just works right around the right edge against Troxel. And Troxel really doesn't have any chance. He gets engaged, then gets way too far out in front of his toes. Ojolari is able to track down Ashford and drop him for the sack. That's a really talented pass rushing group with Ojolari and Harold Perkins coming on as the bookends against these tackles. Australian Oscar Chapman on to punt away. Jack Besh, yet a new return man for LSU. Been changing it up in punt returns since week one. Flag is down at the 45-yard line. We'll wait on the call there. During the kick, illegal block in the back on the receiving team number 15. 
That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick. First down. Of course, all of us are anxious to hear any update as to what is happening with LSU's seven banks. Katie, what can you offer? Tess, I just heard from LSU officials that Seven was taken to the hospital for precautionary reasons, of course. He was conscious, as you guys mentioned, and he did have movement in his extremities. Great news for Seven Banks. That, that is a good update. We, we couldn't confirm that he had movement in his extremities earlier. We did see him being responsive. We did see him speaking to the medical team. So that is a bit of positive news for the moment. We will keep you informed as best we can throughout the evening on seven banks. And Josh Williams takes it ahead for LSU. Armani Goodwin, who has been a solid productive running back, is out with a torn hamstring. He's out four to six weeks, Greg. So we'll get a dose of Emory, Noah Kane, and Josh Williams who we saw there. Still a good three-headed punch of running back. Second and seven. Williams again, and a good surge for that lines again, and that will move the chains for LSU. If you look at LSU's offensive line, maybe not the most athletic group in the world, but they're big and they're physical. Across the front, 325, 325, 335, 345. They have big bodies that really want to lean on you, and Auburn doesn't have great depth, so you can expect LSU to try to deliver body blows early in this football game. First down, Daniels to pass, gets it out quickly, and gets it to the side to Malik Neighbors, who is leading LSU in receiving yards and receptions. Look at Auburn's defensive front. They don't roll a ton of guys. They don't have crazy depth. You'd love to be 8, 9, 10 deep along the front. Auburn just doesn't have that luxury, so they got to dance with Hubranya. So it's going to be really important for them not to have long, extended drives with LSU converting a bunch of third downs. Williams, after the nine-yard game, goes ahead for three and a half and another first down for LSU. Steiner with the tackle there for Auburn. Got it from two. Mike Denbrock in this offense has done a really good job when they've utilized a little tempo going to it here to try to jumpstart the offense. Daniels looking to run, and he struggles to get back to the line again as he fell into the arms of Marcus Harris, the transfer from Kansas a couple of years back. Noah Payne on second down. That Rouge native who started his college football career at Penn State before coming home. Kobe Wooden with the tackle. Longtime starter for Auburn. And you can see LSU's plan early. I mean, just try to pound away and let that big offensive line see if they can't push the Auburn defensive front into making more third and manageable situations where now Jaden Daniels can use his legs along with his arm to potentially pick up a conversion. Third down and seven. Daniels leaks out. Tuck's going to get to that edge and a first down for LSU. And you're going to see a defensive lineman out here moving out to the left. That's Marcus Harris. Just loses contain as they try to get a bit of a twist. And as he steps up, the engagement right there by Frazier, the left guard, hanging on just long enough to allow Daniels to get out to the edge. It's a good job of protection, just a poor job of staying disciplined in your pass rush if you're the Auburn Tigers. And on first down, as he lowers the shoulders and drives ahead. The tackle came from Marcus Bragg. going to be important to get these wide receivers started at some point with a quick throw. Here's an opportunity on the slant, but it was thrown high into the outside of the speedy Brian Thomas. Just off the mark there from Daniels. Tried to get the slant, didn't get it timed out. But here for Brian Kelly, could be four down territory. I mean, you get 
three, four, five yards here. Obviously, you don't convert, but you certainly think about keeping your offense on the field. Here in this situation, a guy that's been a go-to guy for them has been Malik Neighbors. He's at the top of the screen. Let's see if they can create a matchup for him against zone coverage. Daniels looks that way, then comes back, avoids the rush, goes to the other side, and a great effort, but they're saying incomplete as Thomas couldn't corral it inbounds. It's a great effort there by Thomas. Does he get it down? Very close. Ball's thrown just a little bit high. Where's that foot? Yep, just out of bounds. Great job by the side judge there. Having a close eye on it, but a good effort and a good job too of Daniels keeping his eyes downfield and finding the Thomas. Just got to bring his sights down a little bit on the throw. Second punt of the night already for Bramlett. As he'll try to pin Scott. Nose down, reverse rotation. See if he can get it to check. Instead, it's a fair catch at the 13-yard line. So that'll bring the birthday boy back out there. Never work in progress in the first month of the season. Remember, they're down to somebody they would say would be their number three option at center. Brandon Council is a veteran starter, but they moved him inside. After retirement of Nick Brom, the injury to Tate Johnson. They're going with Council at center. Which means we should take a look at some of these snaps throughout the evening. Never know if he's going to fire a fastball in there. Bigsby, now this is well blocked. And that is exactly what he can do when he does get the opportunity it'll be third and short and that's about as much space as tanks had in quite a while and a great job there on second and long as you can see the transition up front with Alec Jackson and Brandon Council switching up that double team and locking on and a good job too as you can see tank Bigsby falling forward like he seems to always do They're down at one. Tight splits for Bigsby, who's going to get the first down. Now, you know, it's interesting. We've been analyzing Auburn all week long in this offense, and Bigsby, in dealing with the lack of opportunity with the blocking up front, is distinct. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, before contact, it's getting hit basically half a yard downfield, basically at the line of scrimmage almost every single time. That's 236th in college football. But look at after contact. That's really when running backs make their hay. Sure. Nearly four and a half yards after contact every single rush. That's 12th in college football. So got to give him some space. And now he's going to get steady work. And there's a perfect example of it, Greg, as you saw him carrying Ojolari for extra yardage out to the 31-yard line. Yeah, I mean, and that was poorly blocked. And yet he falls forward. I mean, look at there's Plenty of guys there, Ojolari being the best example, an all-SEC defender that's draped around his ankles, and Tank makes it second and four. I mean, just a really good run there by the back. And there's one of the high snaps that was going to concern many this week with the change at center. Remember, Brandon Council was in his seventh year of college football with medical red shirts and COVID, but he's a guard. And now because of what they're down to, he comes in and plays center. Yeah, it's a thankless spot. I mean, great hands there by the baseball player, Robbie Ashford. That's high heat. As a baseball player, you sometimes see that. But as you can see, Brian Harson looking on. I mean, sometimes those are going to happen. That's not Brandon Council's first position. He's doing the best with what he's got. And so far, he's been pretty good. Makes for a third and four. Ashford, too quick of a strike thrown on the slant. That was a worm burner dart in front of Johnson. Yeah, just an inaccurate throw there from Robbie Ashford. Feet were a little indecisive, kind of double clutched it, and then ball came out nose down. He definitely had Johnson, and that's one that really got a hit. It's not a difficult throw, but one that he's just a little bit off the mark on. Chapman, second punt of the night. The Aussie sends this downfield. A fair catch near the 25-yard line. Well, Jaden Daniels, year number one at LSU, played for his dad out on the West Coast. Dad Jay, who was a college player himself, and then was heavily recruited out of Southern California, played for Herm Edwards at Arizona State, had 18 wins there, got a lot of experience, and he's grown in stature. I mean, he was a thin guy, right? When he starts college still, career, he's still a thin guy. He's still like a wily guy. I don't think he was like 140 getting in that college, but I mean, it feels 
42 pounds is aggressive. <laughs> it still doesn't see, seem super thick now, even as a fourth-year player. 42. Good run by Williams. Everybody is very impressed by Williams from fall camp onward, a former walk-on. Good, smart player, good pass protection, runs hard. Yeah, as you can see in the front right there, Colby Wooden kind of swung inside, and there was really no linebacker home. Good run there. Look at the time Daniels has, and then goes to the top of your screen to Mason Taylor, the freshman tight end. Now Daniels comes into the game, six touchdown passes, yet to throw an interception. 117 pass attempts now to start the season. It's an about important it graphic, but as a former quarterback, I hate it. It's like talking about the perfect game sure. in the sixth inning. You know, it's like, it's like, I feel like a jinx is coming when you put a graphic up, but still, credit to his decision making so far. Williams, nothing to find there, as right in the middle was Harris. Jaden Daniels really has been. I mean, he's been their whole offense at times this year. I mean, the receivers, frankly, have been a little disappointing. I mean, this was supposed to be one of the best groups in America, and they haven't necessarily lived up to that billing. But Jaden Daniels, even knowing that they're starting two freshman bookend tackles, he's been outstanding keeping pass rushers ominous with his willingness to take off and run. They're one of three on third down tonight. Third down and six. Three-man rush, dropping eight, and right at the chains as a flag is down is Mason Taylor. Illegal shift on the offense, number seven and number 24. A five-yard penalty will be enforced in the previous spot in the replay third down. It's Booty, the wide receiver, and Kane, the running back. And this is really close. You're going to see them adjust on the right side. Look at the three receivers still moving as they send the motion. And it, it just, it's really close, but you have to be set for a full second. And that's ultimately on the quarterback. Jade Daniels, a veteran. You got to make sure everybody's set before you send the motion because this third down just got a whole heck of a lot more difficult. Daniels overlooking that Auburn defense on third and 11. And they get to him. Brought down by Wooden. And this is a great job. You're going to see high edge presence, and then you're going to see inside rush. Just beautifully done. As Leota's working high. And Wooden does a great job of making the guy miss Frazier there in the front. Terrible set there by the left guard, Frazier. An excellent job there by the Auburn defense. Third straight punt for Bramlett and LSU. Deontay Scott is driven back. Look at this ball. Inside the five. All the way to the one. Jay Bramlett, who was with Brian Kelly at Notre Dame the last three years, grew up in Tuscaloosa, said, I'm going back home to the SEC, and just blasted one 65 yards to the one-yard line. Wow. <laughs> another game for LSU, another game which a critical special teams play is made, this time for the good. What a kick. I mean, perfect booming spiral. Checking up just at the five yard line, and now Robbie Ashford having to work his backed up mechanics, which is difficult on anyone, let alone a redshirt freshman. This is where you execute your hard count, see if you can't get five free yards by LSU jumping off sides. With his feet in his own end zone, so he's going to try to get some breathing room and a good push from the center of that offensive line with Brandon Council. Katie. You know, it's the first time Robbie Ashford has played a football game since Little League. That was on his actual birthday, so his family, of course, is here to celebrate. Mom Melanie is in the stands with his sister, brother-in-law, and, of course, his granny, Rustine. Robbie's her only grandson. She was over the moon when he told her he was coming home to play for Auburn. She rarely missed a game when he was growing up. She doesn't miss a game now. Isn't that something? Granny Rustine sitting there in the stands, would watch him at Hoover High outside of Birmingham. Now gets to come down the road to Auburn and see her grandson as the starting quarterback for these Tigers. Second and six, and Bigsby not finding much at all. No gain on that play. Be third down. 
Yeah, and he's done a good job so far mm -hmm. tonight. A couple misses, but all part of the maturation process. And I can tell you this, as someone that knows from experience, he should be glad that he's wearing orange and navy right now because mm -hmm. if you're the visiting team and you're in that part oh. of the field, it is a nightmare. <laughs> so you got the student you. section, you got the band, you got the entire. I spent half a of fourth quarter the down there, and it was awful. Right? Right. It's really tough. Now really, you did really have tough. a 15-play game-winning drive here. I, I, I remember the horrors of that end zone more than anything. Here's third and six from two yards into his end zone, and it connects with Johnson again. When he had to have it, Robbie Ashford found it. Big play for 20 yards on third and six to Johnson. Just a thing of beauty here from Robbie Ashford. Took his time, felt the rush, and it was zone coverage too. And he squeezed it in there in a very tight window as Johnson was running the slant. That is a big time throw from the quarterback. Just over Harold Perkins' outreached arm, the linebacker for LSU. Bigsby tries to cut back, loses the ball! And there is a scramble for the ball, and I believe Robbie Ashford himself jumped on it at the 20-yard line. Joe, Greg, and Katie with you here. Start of the second quarter at Auburn. Auburn with the ball. With a second and long. Robbie Ashford on his 20th birthday, the starting quarterback, already with a touchdown pass tonight. And wide open and complete to Hunter. Jarquez Hunter. Look at him go. Talented running back. Cutting back and inside the 20. Ashford making the most of it and finding Hunter downfield. At 61 yards for Auburn. And you can tell LSU's defense was told all week by their defensive coordinator, Matt House. Hey, man, you can't let this guy get loose with how he runs the football. But now, as those defenders are triggering towards the line of scrimmage to try to sack Robbie Ashford in the backfield, he's allowing guys to become uncovered downfield. There, Jarquez Hunter on the wheel route. He finds him, and Hunter does, a, does the rest with a great run after catch. Same thing that happened on the earlier touchdown to Johnson. Everybody had to honor the legs of Ashford, open things up downfield. And now with time, to the end zone! Touchdown, Camden Brown, the freshman! And doesn't this team look different? went against you in special teams that didn't work out. They had it won if not for the oh. move late on the on the illegal motion. I mean just a million different penalties. They go with a little pop to Booty and he high hurdles and a penalty is down there as Keishon Booty gets the work on the jet motion. This is going to come back because you're not allowed to block below the waist outside the tackle box and that's exactly what Josh Williams did. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist on the offense number 27. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. Who will replay first down? And look on the left side, number 27. He goes low there against Keontae Scott and that's a new rule this year. If you are you are allowed to block below the waist inside the tackle box but that's at the free snap. So if you are out in front, you cannot block below the waist. And that was a very easy call for this officiating crew on the new rule that was implemented this past offseason for player safety. Backs him up to 15. That's incomplete again off the hands of Mason Taylor. Right now with LSU, everything feels just a little bit out of sync. It does. Just a little bit off with some of the accuracy, the stuff that Jaden Daniels has been hitting in his sleep. 
the last couple weeks. Just the tiniest bit off so far in the early going. You have to wonder, remember he was a little banged up last week. Not 100% sure exactly what that injury was, but maybe that's affecting his accuracy a little bit here in the first, second quarter. And Brian Kelly told us he could have gone back into the New Mexico game, but he said this wasn't worth it. Had to assess things and think about it. And he's taken down for a sack here on second and 20. And it's Colby Wooden again. Great big play there by Colby Wooden. Trying to get a quarterback draw. I mean, about as safe a play as you can have as an offense. And I told you a second ago when Robbie Ashford was in the shadow of his own goalpost here. This is about as difficult a place in college football. Around the 10-yard line backed up against the Auburn student section. You have to be good with your communication because it's loud and intense in this part of the field. Just listen to it. Third and 24, sprint right, Daniels looking for something, goes underneath and taken down right away was Taylor. And that was Nehemiah Pritchett with the tackle, and now LSU just one of five on third down this evening. An excellent sequence there by the Auburn Tigers, but really LSU didn't have much of a chance after the first down penalty on the block below the waist. Remember Jay Bramlett let loose with a sky punt that he drove 65 yards last time out. He needs to flip the field here. Deontay Scott driven back again all the way to the 26-yard line. And Scott finds a seam, and it's a good return out past the 40-yard line. Fighting spirit moment is brought to you by Modelo. And it was a great play call for the Auburn offense. They have corner blitz. They opt to go with a little bit of a V route in the back for Camden Brown. And this is very, very easily protected. A little bit of a bust in coverage because there's nobody home in the deep third. And Camden's able to reel it in on the throw from Robbie Ashford. You can see everything right now going Auburn's way. Great execution, timely play calls, and taking advantage of every single LSU mistake. Robbie Ashford, two touchdown throws tonight. Already has 163 yards passing. Had 127 in an overtime game last week. Hunter had the big reception moments ago, and here he charges ahead with a good run out to the 47-yard line tackle by Greg Brooks. I can't say it enough. I mean, this Auburn offensive line, you would think that you lose another center. You're now on center number three. You're mixing guys up. You're putting guys in different places. Stutz is going to left. Jackson's going to right. I mean, this whole Auburn offensive line basically turned upside down with the exception of the tackles and the surge that they're getting so far and the protection that Ashford's getting, it's almost night and day compared to what we've seen the first four weeks. Second and three. Hunter again. And Hunter keeps his footing and will have that midfield line to gain brooks with another tackle and a first down for auburn and look at what this offense has been able to produce against an lsu defense that's got some talent on it and what they are in the season what they've got tonight a really good defense and a defense that's really been getting better the last few weeks empty look for ashford on first down down field and gets it complete again and it's Coy Moore going up against his former teammates, the transfer from LSU. And this is just a young man in Robbie Ashford that's just on fire. This is a heat check right here. Seam route, perfect throw up and over the defender. As you can see, the defensive player, Colby Richardson, the corner, is playing it perfectly. I mean, squeezing the seam almost makes the play, but the ball arrives before he can. I mean, just a perfectly thrown football. Was movement on the left side of the line. False start on the offense number 77. That's a five yard penalty, and it remains first down. Robbie Ashford told Brian Harson this week, he said, Listen, I'm feeling confident in the game plan. I feel confident in what's happening. He had told many this week, I feel like it's coming. I feel like the breakthrough for this offense is going to be this week. No, well, it's been this first half. Ashford now 194 yards. Auburn has 231 total yards to this point to LSU's 53. I mean, it's a completely different approach than what we've seen last week. As you can see here, Kesaw, the offensive coordinator, looking on. First and 15 after the penalty. Drives that leg to the ground in front of the feet of Jackson. 
And that's okay. You're going to look at it and say, oh, my goodness, what a terrible throw. No, that's a good throw away. I mean, don't do anything unnecessary. They covered it well. You had a man beater route. They played zone. Throw it in the ground. Let it play second down. And that's a, that's a mature decision here in the red area where if you try to extend the play, you get sacked. Next thing you know, you're out of field goal range. That was a good decision from Robbie Ashford and actually a fine throw, even though one would think it's way, way, way off the mark from an accuracy standpoint. Second 15 gets it out quickly as he goes to Samuel Shanker. And John Samuel Shanker will take it down to the 11 yard line tackled by Perkins. Got that C right on his jersey. Longtime veteran, dependable, reliable. Had a big game against LSU last year. Had 102 yards receiving. Hadn't had an Auburn. Georgia, first time they've trailed all season. That on SEC Network and the bottom ACC Network and ESPNU. Joe Tessitore, as always, a great busy night of college football. It is indeed, Matt, and it's nice to spend it with you. That Missouri team up a field goal on Georgia. That Missouri team was down here at Jordan Hur last year, and Auburn caught a break in overtime when Missouri fumbled as they were going in for the game-winning touchdown in overtime, and that's how Auburn won. Wins a win. Talked about that with Brian Harson the other day, and he said, listen, our guys just go to work. That's what they do. They care. They go to work. They're ready for the next week. And were they ready to start this game against LSU? They're up two touchdowns. Third down and four off the timeout. Ashford, that was off the shoulder of Hunter. A great play there, too, by Greg Penn. Man coverage, having to go cover Hunter on the wheel route is no easy task. Especially for a guy that's 240 pounds. He's all over it, totally sniffed out, and breaks it up rather easily. Excellent job there by LSU's linebacker. Going to be a 29-yard attempt for Anders Carlson, second all-time on Auburn's career scoring list. Of course, his older brother, an all-time legend. And he drives it through. And with that, Auburn is up 17 to zip on LSU. Let's check in with Katie George. Well, guys, Jaden Daniels is a laid-back guy. Nothing seems to rattle him, almost to a fault at times. Mike Dimbrock says he'd like to see some more urgency from him, but it works best as a leader. His calmness comes in handy as he talks to Keishon Booty here. They had about a 35-second conversation over on the sidelines. He might need some urgency on the field, but it's this kind of leadership, this one-on-one -on -one interaction that his players and teammates absolutely love about their guy. Yeah, and Katie and Greg, you know this, all the conversations, well, we've been with LSU a lot in the course of the last month and a half, but all the conversations are about, okay, yeah, he's California cool, but he's well-respected in the locker room. Yes, he's earned their respect, and it's difficult to do, obviously, but in the new era of college football, I mean, guys come in a week later, hey, we'll follow this guy, let's go. So it's been impressive to see how he has kind of taken ownership of the offensive side of the football, but he's got to put a drive together here, and I would expect them to start to lean a little more on the run game because it was working for him there in the first few drives. Here's Pesh from the two-yard line. Turns the corner, flag is down as he gets a good return. But we'll see if that holds up for the moment. Ashford had the 53-yard touchdown pass to get the night started. Another one to Brown, and then a few more moments to go. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team number 23. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And not one of those scoring drives, by the way, was longer than three minutes for Auburn. Sunday night baseball on ESPN will be the Braves hosting the Mets. It's 90 minutes up 85. That's tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown gets started at 6 p.m. And these are the things that our producer, Scott Matthews, stresses over right here. <laughs> and that's having led the NLEs for 170 days and now tied for three days. I don't often root for the Braves. I'm a Dodger fan. I don't often root for the Braves. I'm rooting for them now. I do not want to see that one-two punch that the Mets have in their rotation in the NLDS. Josh Williams, good run straight ahead as he goes for, see where they marked this, if they give him the 10 yards, or nine and a half. Be second and short. And I think this is what LSU kind of needs to do. They had success early on running the football. 
really most of their runs have been attacking right downhill. The offensive line so far has kind of struggled in pass protection. And Auburn's defensive line's done a pretty good job winning in the pass rush, but they haven't necessarily been up to the task of stopping the run just yet. Second and one. Williams again. Held up for a moment. And this is going to be close to that line again. Giving that forward progress. And to say, yes, it is a first down for Josh Williams. Unlike Dendrock, I'm continuing to just challenge that offensive line, especially the right-hand side with Anthony Bradford and Emory Jones, just two combined 380 pounds. That right side is enormous. They're going to lean heavily on that Auburn defensive front. So I'm going to continue to try to impose my will between the tackles. Number Jones, number 50, the right tackle is a true freshman. Bookend true freshman tackles for LSU. Daniels, ball came out as he was tracked down by Derek Hall. Went out of bounds, but Derek Hall, he has that burst. The SEC defensive lineman of the week after his effort against Mizzou. Had an interception a couple sacks a week ago. And this is just a really patient rush here. I mean, watch Derek Hall in the end. He's right here. And as you can see, he's not really doing much. And then as soon as Daniels decides to escape, he disengages and tracks down the quarterback. That's just a veteran who's an outstanding player on the end of the line of scrimmage. Not being too aggressive with this rush and tracking down the quarterback from the sack. Second and 12. There's the slant, and there's a first down for LSU as that was a strike to Malik Neighbors, who has really become the go-to receiver for LSU. Yeah, and this is a nice throw, too. Safety inside for Auburn. Zion Puckett comes down close, anticipating run, and they hit the slant right in behind him. Only their second, third down conversion tonight. And quickly gets it to Mason Taylor, who dives ahead out to the 45-yard line. Second five. How do you respond? How do you dig out of a big hole for Brian Kelly and LSU? Brick by brick, patiently on offense, seems to be the answer on this drive. Tackled for a loss. And darting into the backfield right there was Scott. And this is just miscommunication with the bunch on the right. I mean, looks like Booty and Jenkins just didn't want communicate, see who was going to block Scott in the backfield. Fourth tackle for loss in this first half for Auburn. Third down and six. Three-man rush against Daniels, and he threw it behind Neighbors. Neighbors found a pocket on the in cut, and Daniels threw it behind him. Just a little bit off the mark there from Jaden Daniels. Did a great job. Started his eyes to the right. This is a showing him going through the progression and the progress that he's made in that regard. Gets all the way back on the sprinkler read. Think about a sprinkler. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Works all the way back. Finds neighbors just a little bit behind him, though, on the throw. Did, did you just bust out a sprinkler yeah, sound? It's sprinkler. Just think about a sprinkler going across. That's a sprinkler read. Right to left. Ramblet. It's going to sky this. Scott calls for the fair catch with traffic around him. And a flag comes down because of that. And you can see what that does to Boyle, a special teams coordinator, Brian Polian, former Nevada head coach, was a Brian Kelly staff at Notre Dame. So the kick catch interference is the call my goodness i mean how many penalties has lsu had on special teams i mean that's huge for field position 17 nothing down here at home for these tigers the auburn tigers came out there jay ward's returning it for lsu flag is down at the 22. ojawari had a strip sack Fumbled the ball to Ashford, and Ward returned it for what stands right now as a touchdown pending the penalty flag. And sometimes that's just what you need when you're in a spot like LSU was.
B.J. Ojolari comes up huge, and Jay Ward returns it for a score. And this right here, this is exactly what we talked about earlier with Robbie Ashford. When you escape in the SEC, you better escape north and south. If you escape horizontally, these guys will catch you. They are so athletic along the front. It's like the NFL. It's exactly where B.J. Ojolari will be playing here in the next couple of years. Just an excellent job of relentless pursuit and timing it up, getting a hand on the throwing arm of Robbie Ashford before that ball begins to move forward. And I think this is going to stand because, yes, the arm is moving forward, but I do think the ball is out before that arm starts its move. And with that play officially under review, let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. Yeah, Joe, uh, Greg, you just mentioned the arm coming forward. The actual rule is the hand coming forward, and I agree with you. I think the ball was out before his hand started forward. Therefore, he threw with an empty hand. Uh, this should be a fumble and a return for touchdown. It should be confirmed. And just think about where LSU was in this game, where they had all the penalties against them for 70 yards, six penalties, five possessions, and only one time getting into Auburn territory. They needed to have a swing play. It just happened. B.J. Ojolari, strip sack, Jay Ward, fumble return, touchdown, and LSU is on the board. Just a massive play there, a huge turn. As everything was going Auburn's way, now momentum squarely on the shoulders of the LSU Tigers, thanks to their best defensive player, B.J. Ojolari. Wes Hunter stood up to that and then is taken down 25. What is going on, Matt? What do we have brewing in Columbia, Missouri? Tigers 0-16 all-time against the number one team. Well, guess what? What a grab by Tyler Stevens. They're up 10-0 on Georgia in the second. And right now, Clemson and NC State over on ABC tied at three apiece. What's going on in Columbia? Missouri up 10-0 on the number one team in the country. Stetson Bennett has 14 yards passing, has one completion in that game to this point. Delay, Bigsby, and he goes out to the 31. And let's go back to the sack fumble. When you watch Robbie Ashford, great athlete, all right? Side to call a shot downfield. It's no problem. It's good protection initially. He starts to take off. I'm good here. I'm good here. I'm good here. One or I'm not good here. And that's exactly what happens. He takes off and inevitably gets sacked, leading to the fumble. Big speed. Made a man miss. And then darts ahead to the 40 for a first down. It was Jay Ward who had the touchdown moments ago who couldn't tackle Bigsby. And a great job there by Bigsby getting upfield, shedding the first tackler and falling forward for the first down. They quickly get it to Johnson and Johnson is wrapped up immediately that time by Jarek Bernard Converse. Remember, Johnson had the 53-yard touchdown. That opened up our scoring tonight. I like this sequence so far from the Auburn offense. Brain trust. Brian Harson, Eric Keesaw, a couple of easy throws. You get a little screen, and you get a little now route to the outside. Those are confidence builder for your young quarterback that just made a mistake. Now he's back feeling good about himself after seeing a couple completions. Bigsby's in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Second and nine. Empty look for Ashford. And hooking it up at the 49-yard line to Corey Moore. Right here, this, based on what Brian Harson did last week, this is four-down territory. I mean, he will not stop and punt unless he loses six or seven yards here, whatever reason. But on short yards, he's going for it. And what they did last week over and over again was that inside power with his running back. Third and one, they go with the quarterback sneak, and that'll get them the first down. Not even a question that it's two-down territory for them. They have an analytics expert on the staff. And you see this team, once they're minus 35, and they've got the numbers the way they like them, they'll always roll the dice on fourth down. A lot of people had an issue with that fourth down decision last week, but they had been really, really successful on fourth down leading up to that point. you got to trust the analytics, and if you continue 
to lean on this offensive line that's playing good football tonight and a talented back. More often than not, fourth and short, you're in good shape. That was referenced to last week, a chance to win it late. And instead they went for it in field goal. Little razzle-dazzle and downfield the catch to Kelly. And it was Robbie Ashford coming around and throwing it down to Amari Kelly. And this was also right here, a little wildcat throwback. Ashford doesn't like the post, it's well covered. He finds Kelly, it gets deflected too, and excellent concentration from Kelly to reel it in. Now with the first down, Bigsby looking for anything and working his way for a one-yard gain tackled by Jay Ward. I mean, this is an unbelievable play. Really a, an unbelievable play by Ochimari running with the wide receiver down the field, almost making the PBU, but Kelly reeling it in off of his shoestrings. Just incredible concentration on the slightly underthrown deep ball from his quarterback. How about the athleticism from Rojawari? We're so see used to seeing him tracking down quarterbacks, sideline <laughs> He's to sideline. stride for He's stride with, with a receiver. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Defensive end downfield with a receiver. I like that matchup if I'm a quarterback too, but my goodness, maybe I need to think twice about it if I get it again. Second and nine. Ashford man in his face. Oh, that was dangerous as Coy Moore had barely turned around and Greg Brooks was almost there to find the football. And a good job, too, by the defensive end. Looked like it was number 35, Savion Jones. Just getting right into the face, not falling victim to that little ball in the belly to the back. Going right to the mesh point and forcing the ball out of Ashford's hands quickly. Remember, they've had quick strike scoring drives. This is now the ninth play of the drive coming tonight. The longest for Auburn tonight. Third down and nine for Ashford. Out of the backfield. Bigsby is sent back. That was Garner just thudding Bigsby. And this is just a great job by Matt House. He calls cover two, and this is so hard on a quarterback. Cover two meaning the corner is actually going to stay in the flat if there's somebody that's coming into the flat. Safety goes over the top, so they kind of double covered in some ways. Camden Brown, who caught the earlier touchdown, and he throws Bigsby right into the blow-up. That's really hard on a young quarterback. Good job by Tank securing the catch. Carlson comes on for a 40-yard attempt, hit from 29 earlier. And it stayed off to the right. That gives us a chance to check in with Matt in the studio again. Yeah, busy night in college football. Joe Test coming up on the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Georgia is down right now to Missouri, plus Alabama loses Bryce Young. We'll get you caught up on that. Plus, Clemson looking for a little bit of revenge tonight against NC State at home. And Oklahoma State gets their revenge in a rematch of the Big 12 championship. Dan Mullen, Joey Galloway, join me coming up. What a week five we've got developing on a college football Saturday. I want to get into the news that's happening with Alabama with you, Greg, in a moment. Get your reaction to that. As just under two minutes before halftime, Jane Daniels and LSU back out on the field. It was their defense that scored for them earlier, and Daniels finding trouble, finding anything. Kobe Wooden's been all over him. So impressed with Auburn and the way that they are being respectful of the quarterback run game. I mean, they are not over rushing the quarterback so many times. You watch LSU every week. It's like teams are coming after Jaden Daniels and they're running right by him, which leads to huge gains off scrambles. And so far tonight, Auburn has been very, very disciplined on some of those so far. All right, my man, big news in college football today. The Heisman Trophy winner left the game. Bryce Young. Milrow comes in, plays quarterback for Alabama. What do we need to know here? Uh, it's significant, obviously. I mean, Milrow, an unbelievable athlete. Oh, he's got I mean, legs. Fastest guy yeah. on the team. And their offense clearly changes drastically with him under center. But Bryce Young is the straw that stirs the drink. I mean, for the really the offense as a whole, He's been by far the most consistent performer for the last two years. And with a receiving core that's still having their fair share of ups and downs, having an inexperienced quarterback, if for whatever reason Bryce can't go in the future, could be significant for that offense. 
Second and eight. Out in the backfield is Williams, and he's tripped up right away by Nehemiah Pritchett. Just a great job. Not that dissimilar to the play that Bigsby just got absolutely blown up on. They have a late clouded corner. Pritchett comes up, makes the open field tackle. Just a really nice job there from the Auburn defense. Very impressed so far in the first half. It hasn't been flawless by any stretch, but very impressed with the plan I've seen both offensively and defensively from Auburn. They are disciplined, they are running to the football, and they are not giving an inch when Jaden Daniels tries to take off, which is the best part of LSU's offense. Those are traits and characteristics and descriptives that you apply to good coaching, but we know the criticism that has come Brian Harson's way. And we had a great conversation with him yesterday, Gray. So the kids are locked in. The kids lock in to do their job every week to get ready for their opponent. Noise outside the building is different than the tone inside the building. Off the timeout for Auburn, their final third and ten. Daniels going back. Flag is down in the area of holding at the 12-yard line as he launches it downfield and is batted away at the last second by Donovan Kaufman. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face on the defense number 29. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot, and it carries an automatic first down. Automatic first down with a personal foul. And this is Derek Hall, the best defensive player for the Auburn Tigers. He's on the left side working against the true freshman, Will Campbell. Look at that left arm get up into the grill of Campbell, as you can see right there. I mean, clear as day. Great job by the center judge. It's a huge penalty as they were off the field, forced the incompletion. Now their offense is going to have a chance to potentially go steal some points. Instead, LSU has life and might be able to kick it into overdrive a little bit with some timeouts at their disposal, potentially steal some points for themselves. That is a potential big swing penalty there. First down, LSU. Daniels, with pressure coming after him, couldn't get it to Malik Neighbors. Minute 28, LSU has all three timeouts remaining before halftime. Of course, knowing here, biggest thing as a quarterback, can't take a sack, and you absolutely cannot take any unnecessary risks with the football. Obviously, turnover means points, so you've got to be really, really smart. If nothing's there, throw it away, live to play third down. Second and ten, pocket is collapsing. Daniel slithers out, keeps his footing, gets to the outside, and picks up a first down. It was a shoe flying in the middle of that play that had a little bit of everything, including Jaden Daniels getting loose for 12 yards. And this was really gr great play by Jaden Daniels. Pocket kind of collapses. He was patient enough. He has one-on-one -on -one with Kaufman, makes him miss. And then he has Papo. As you can see, it's Jane Daniels running without a shoe. He was running without he a is, shoe. Watch and, this. And Kaufman throws it up in the air after he catches it. I don't know how he was able to cut without a shoe, but very impressive there from the quarterback. Why is it always about a shoe being thrown without a shoe? Daniels, first down. That is way too soon to bring up. You're not allowed to bring up games in which throughs, shoes were thrown. Was that flip? Yeah, of course. The thriller in the fog. Big long field goal down there in the swamp. That was a great play by Wasn't Daniels. It? Wow. He is so athletic. He's got great wheels. Leading rusher. Great feel for the pocket, too. I mean, just allows it to collapse. Doesn't leave too soon. Just a really good feel and understanding. Second and ten. Ball just over midfield. John Emery, remember, had that year-long suspension, came back recently, so shaking off some rust. Apple with the tackle. Well, you referenced the shoe. All I can think about is Austin Powers. I don't know why. Now it's like in my head. Who throws a shoe, honestly? What do remember I have that? to do to get you off that? 
Maybe not bring How about this? I'll read a promo. Tomorrow's Sunday NFL countdown. Jalen Hurts, Jerry Jones, one-on-one. And a look at how the dual threat quarterback has changed the game in the NFL. And then Monday Night Football, Greg, we've got Rams and Niners. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Deportes and the app. Monday Night Countdown will get you started at 6 o'clock. A rematch of the NFC Championship game. Will Damian Ramos get an opportunity here? Right now the ball's on the 46-yard line, and it's a third and six. Keep an eye here on the freshman. We've looked in his direction several times. Mason Taylor here is in the slot. Man coverage. That's a favorable matchup for Jaden Daniels. They're just one of six on third downs tonight. Daniels, third and six, trying to find something before halftime. Pumps, cuts, and spins his way towards the line to gain. Let's see where they mark him here. On what was third and six, they're going to put it right on that mark, and it's a first down for LSU. Two timeouts remaining. Clock stops to move the chains. John Emery in the backfield with Jaden Daniels, trying to dig their way out of the hole. Trailed 17 to zip, had a defensive touchdown. Daniels, look at the time! And now has to chuck it away to live another day with 42 seconds remaining. Brian Kelly said we had an opportunity there. Yeah, he was frustrated. I think he wanted Jaden Daniels to take a shot downfield in a one-on-one -on -one situation against a safety. Instead, Daniels decided to hold on it. Might have let one off the hook there. Forty two seconds remain. Second and ten. Working towards field goal range or perhaps more. Daniels out of the backfield. Emery. Here goes John Emery. And skybound inside the five for a first and goal. LSU. Just a busted coverage there from Auburn. As Donovan Kaufman now is down for the Tigers. Right there in the end zone, just completely busted as Emery was coming out of the backfield on the wheel route. Auburn trying to bring a little bit of pressure. Nobody home. Papo decides to bust it, and Emery nearly hits his head on the goalpost. The 39-yard reception. 31 yards came after the catch from John Emery. That's their first play over 20 yards tonight, Greg. And when you have pressure look, you have pressure inside, all these things, you have this end man of the line of scrimmage has to run with the back out of the backfield. Papo doesn't get the call. They bust it. If that back leaves, you have to peel with him. Papo doesn't. There's nobody home, and Emery has nothing but green grass out in front. It was a good job there in the back end by Puckett making the tackle. But just a critical mistake there from Auburn's defense. They've been so good for the first 29 minutes of this football game and really the first opportunity that LSU's had to really break it open. They do on the busted coverage. Just over half a minute to go until we get to halftime with Matt, Joey, and Coach Mullen. And this is LSU's first trip to the red zone. They trailed 17-0. They needed a spark. They got it defensively. And now Daniels and Emery looking to deliver on this end. Emery to finish it off. Goes up, but is he over and in? No, they're going to mark him short. It'll be second and goal. Be careful if you're John Emery, of course. It was that was Steiner a, coming up with a stop. Yeah, and but remember, what did we see last week as K.J. Jefferson for Arkansas on first and ten in a similar part of the field trying to extend the ball over the goal line. Instead, it gets popped out. Next thing you know, A&M's out the gate the other way. So on first and ten, Emery, I'm all for going vertical. Do not, under any circumstances, let that ball get away from your body because that can turn into a fumble. And that would obviously be a catastrophic mistake for LSU. 
You know, it's funny that you reference what happened last week when we were down there at AT&T Stadium because swing moment, right? Man, swing moment that turned the whole game around where an offense was stumbling around. I mean, we just had a swing moment with a defensive touchdown. And now look at the energy with the LSU offense. LSU has one timeout remaining. One timeout remaining. 18 seconds. Second and goal. Josh Williams comes in to the backfield here. And this last play with Emory going up and reaching for the goal line is officially under review. Let's look at the pylon camera look from a distance to see if that offers anything up. All that needs to happen, you see Emory, where's the nose of the football? Just tough to tell exactly where the ball is relative to the goal line. This will be a good shot here. Where's the ball, as you can see down the line, but where's the goal line? I mean, it's difficult. You can see it down on the on the ground, but there's no clear and indisputable video evidence to me that would indicate that this is a touchdown. So well, I, think, I, I know where the ball is in his hand at that moment, and I'm looking down the line. I know it's far away, and I know we snap zoomed in right there. Right, You can see right there. Is that enough? Is it close enough? It's so close. Greg, you just needs a pimple of leather, my man. I know, but you also have to have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. And right there, I don't know if I have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn. He might have very well scored. I just don't know if I could support it with video replay. So, And if that's the case, then it stands. Then it would be called stands, second and goal from the inch line. But that's a stretch from confirmed and a stretch from reversing. As here it is again. Here's Skycam. Of course, not down the line. You have the angle to deal with where things can look closer based on the angle of the camera. Or further, depending on which camera angle we choose to deliver in our replay here. Down the line, pylon cam dead on accurate. But do you have the clarity to make the confirmation? If the play stands, it is second and goal from an inch away with 18 seconds remaining. And LSU with a timeout in the pocket. Ryan Harson looks on. Saw his team come out as they heard from the critics. Even coming off a win last week. And boy, that was ugly and the offense didn't look good. Offense looked great in the first half tonight. Up until the strip sack fumble. That was forced by B.J. Ojolari. And the 23-yard fumble return touchdown taken back After by the safety, Jay Ward. on the field stands. Second down. And now Jordan Hare is roaring, looking for a goal line stop. Josh Williams in the backfield with Jaden Daniels. Daniels keeps it himself, and oh, was that smooth and easy for an LSU touchdown. What do we say about staying patient, brick by brick? How do you dig yourself out of a hole? One rung at a time. And right now it's down to a possession game. And a great job there by Jaden Daniels. Just feeling the right side of that offensive line kind of surge. You got a guy running with your tight end into the flat, and you walk into the end zone. Excellent two-minute drill operation by LSU. Ramos hits the extra point. He's been perfect doing that ever since what happened against Florida State week one to close out the game. That was an 11 place 77 yard drive. Bro. Yeah, thing of beauty too. And for whatever reason, LSU, as you can see on the scoring drive, doubling up their offensive production on fewer plays. But for whatever reason, when you watch LSU this year, it's almost like they're more comfortable in a two minute situation. Yes. It's like they're more Everything's a little bit smoother. Things are happening a little bit faster. Why is that? I think because you eliminate the thinking to have some type of analytical approach and you're lining up and trying to survey the defense, you can have paralysis by analysis. You're just allowing your athletes to be athletes on the field in a two-minute situation. They have better players than most teams. That's just what LSU is. They're always going to have better players. They have unbelievable personnel. So... I think they just, when you take the thinking and the thought process out of it, they play more instinctively and it's led to better results.
throughout the course of the first month of the season and now obviously tonight. High above Jordan Hare with the AT&T 5G Skycam. Hunter returning this from the 10 yard line. And Hunter tried to break free to the right side gets out past the 30 but only nine seconds remaining. All things considered, if you're Auburn, though, you, you have to feel really good about your first half of football. Yes, you had a mistake that led to a touchdown. Yes, defensively, you had a mistake that led to the biggest offensive play of the game for the LSU Tigers on the Emory wheel route up the right-hand side. So Auburn's probably looking at themselves saying, man, we made a bunch of mistakes in the first half of that football game, and yet we still have the lead. So I think both teams actually, in those rare instances, they both go to the locker room feeling pretty good about where they're at at this point of the game. Auburn punted five times in a row. Then you get the big play from Ojolari and Ward, the scoop six. Then you get the touchdown drive. That happens over the last six and a half minutes of the half. And then you look up at the scoreboard and you say, ooh, something's different. It feels like SEC in prime time. We got a wild one, close and fun. Katie. Coach Kelly, your defense provided a much needed spark there. Now you're only down by three. What did you make of the first half? Well, I mean, obviously we gave up big plays in the passing game. Um, we expected this to be a game where we needed to stop the run and we gave up big plays uh, in the past game. You know, they broke contain two or three times. We were out of coverage, um, undisciplined, and offensively we've struggled. We haven't made any plays until the last drive. But give our guys credit. You know, they battled. They weren't playing great. They hung in there, and, and we came up with the big play on defense and then a great drive at the end of the half. Showed some great resolve to get back in this, and we get the ball in the second half, and um, new ball game. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Coach Pass. Kelly was expecting the Auburn run game. It was Ashford with 247. And I think, like we talked about, it's one of those rare instances going in at halftime. Both teams probably felt pretty good. LSU saying, we got all the momentum. Auburn saying, hey, we gave them the momentum, right? So it's going to be a fascinating third quarter to see what adjustments were made. Daniels, this is how he gets the second half started and complete to Brian Thomas. It looks like Jaden Daniels settled in, was a little bit off the mark early on. As you can Daniels see. or Thomas may have taken out his teammate, Kayshawn Butte, a little friendly fire on the sidelines. Yeah. Butte's in pain there at the end of the play. Kind of got rolled up as Thomas got pushed. It looked like, and watch, Booty's right there. Number seven, as you can see, his right leg oh. kind of gets caught underneath Thomas. It's going down. So Kayshawn Butte, preseason All-America, just sitting there on the sideline, and he takes a hit. And as Williams will roll ahead, out to the 28-yard line, the third down from there. There is Kayshawn. He is back after missing last week's game with the birth of his first child. His son was born on September 22nd. Now back to action here on the road in the SEC. Congratulations, Kayshawn. Man, that's awesome. Congrats on the birth of your son. Amazing. Third down and seven. Daniels, pocket collapses on him, and another sack for Auburn. That was Marcus Bragg bringing down Jaden Daniels. You're going to watch these end defenders really just squeeze the pocket. I mean, this is like a boa constrictor. As you can see, Derek Hall and the other defender, being able to drop him down, that was Bragg on the other side, just condensing the pocket, working against two freshman tackles. And Daniels really didn't have any opportunity to make a play. Third sack for Auburn, sixth tackle for Laws. Bramblett on to punt again. Exactly what Brian Harson said he wanted to see when he was talking to Katie there. Let's go out, play some defense right here. Have a good third quarter. And he also referenced the self-inflicted mistakes. It's exactly what they were. If you're looking at it from an offensive perspective, of course, right there. Unbelievable play by B.J. Ojolari. Gave LSU a lot of life. Auburn did respond decently, but they missed the field goal on the ensuing drive. Then they were off the field. Derek Hall, their best defender, gets the hand up around the face. Then they blow a coverage a little later in the drive. And Jane Daniels pays it off a few plays later on the easy touchdown. Just a great job by LSU securing the momentum and taking full advantage of some of the mistakes that Auburn made. But not often that you see that penalty in a highlight sequence of documenting the action, but it was that critical. Yeah, the momentum right before halftime to keep that drive alive, and that's how we got to this spot. Daniels had the one-yard touchdown run. 
and just a three-point margin. Roy with the tackle there. No gain for Tank Bixby. Both these staffs do an excellent job, too, of really looking at what they did in the first half, tweaking things a little bit here or there, and really doing a great job with adjustments in the second half. It'll be interesting to watch what Matt House does defensively to try to keep Robbie Ashford contained. Ashford on second down. Going to be third and ten. Micah Baskerville was tracking him. An excellent coverage there from LSU. Really nothing open on the rollout. Trying to get an easy completion into the flat. And LSU was having none of it. Just beautifully done there in the secondary for the Tigers. Third down and ten. They were five of nine in the first half on third down. Ashford going to set it up for Bigsby. Blocker in front, but he's going to be tackled short as Wingo tracked him down. A flag is down at the 35-yard line. Illegal block in the back on the offense number 62. That penalty is declined. It will be fourth down. Cameron Stutz, who's playing left guard tonight. They've been moving things around on the inside of this offensive line. And Brandon Council now playing center. Back-to-back -back drives. Oh, Auburn's oh, defense, oh, wonderful, wonderful job of kind of making life difficult on the quarterback and condensing the pocket. Then LSU's defense said, anything you can do. They play their starters, but don't roll a ton of guys. And fatigue becomes a huge issue as the game goes along. Second and one. Emery will get some work. And the bounce free, John Emery. There was nothing there. And then he bounced free to the right side, made the most of it. Remember, he had that 93-yard reception in the first half. It looked like Emery was going to be bottled up. Bragg kind of had a hand on him right there. Number 98 just couldn't bring him down. Emery too strong as he falls forward for a nice game. A 39-yarder he had in the first half. That really sparked things on that drive. And now he gets a good one here for 10 yards and a first down for LSU. Daniels as he glides past midfield. It's the exact same play they ran a few snaps earlier. We get Auburn running horizontally, chasing the tight end. If Auburn decides to commit to you as a runner, you just dump it to your tight end to the flat. He turns up field. But if nobody takes you, Daniels falls forward and continues to have a really nice productive play on first and ten. Daniels with time, checks down, looking for Emery, incomplete. That was second and four. He would have turned those hips and had the first down. Instead, it's third and four. That's been a bit of a work in progress for Emery. He had the nice catch down the right sideline earlier. He's a great ball carrier, but the nuance of his game, because he's missed so much time with injury, is still a bit of a work in progress. And being a well-rounded receiver, one of those areas that he's going to need to continue to improve. But right here, third down, their guy has been Malik Neighbors, number eight. He's at the bottom of your screen. If they can get a one-on-one -on -one with him, that's a favorable matchup for LSU. Third down and four, and listen to this crowd. Incomplete. Looking for neighbors. There's a pretty good route by neighbors. He wins over the top rather easily, but they're trying to get him on an underneath Indy route. Ball's thrown behind and just a little bit late. As you can see, Derek Hall, number 29, coming out underneath it. Just a slightly off the mark throw there from Daniels after the nice route there by neighbors. Seventh punt of the night for LSU. Hitting the accelerator. Joe Fouché eventually with the tackle back into the lineup for LSU. Just a great job here by the offensive line. As you see the jet sweep motion going side to side. But look at the left side. Zier and Stutz just completely engulfing LSU Tigers at both the first and the second level, which allowed Ashford to go vertical. And I told you at the beginning of the show, if this guy gets going north and south, it is a tough deal for defenses. 
And now over the middle, threw it too far out in front of John Samuel Shanker. All part of the maturation process as a young player. He makes a great play on the run and then misses a layup. As Shanker's crossing the middle of the field, left some yards on right there. But that's just part of having a young quarterback at the position. Have some high highs and some low lows at the spot. Coach Orson made the comment that sometimes he tries to guide that ball. Second and ten. Bigsby. He is driven back. Makai Wingo was there acting like a wall against Tank Bigsby. LSU defensive coordinator Matt House just on the other side of that glass wall next to us. Spent time with the Chiefs in the NFL, was at Kentucky. He's done a great job throughout the course of the first month of the season, making adjustments at halftime and changing some of the looks for opposing quarterbacks. Third down and ten. Shallow cross. Brown is upended and a flag is down at the 48-yard line. And another flag that came in really late, too, from the back judge. Pass interference. On the offense, number 85, 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. We will replay third down. And this is Fromm, who's blocking before the ball is released. See number 85 right there, just blocking before the ball is caught. As you can see, Brown catching it right there on the logo. It's a good call there by the officials. You cannot engage in blocking. You have to kind of be a little bit of an actor it's a little bit like a like a bubble screen, but it's coming on a shallow cross from the other side. Very similar. You just got to time that up a little better. And Fromm a little early with his initiating the block. Tyler Fromm, the younger brother of former Georgia quarterback Jake Fromm. What in the world is going on with Georgia tonight, by the way, at the half trail in Missouri by 10. After the penalty, it's a third and 25. Ashford launches it downfield and in stride and getting it. Is the aforementioned Tyler Fromm. First down, Auburn. And that's Auburn's sixth play of over 20 yards tonight. And another example of the LSU defense. This time it's Makai Garner, the corner, number two. Take a look at it in just a minute, but he gets caught coming up and run support, and Fromm's wide open behind him. 35 yard play. And now Ashford goes down to Bixby. That was dangerous. And charging in there on the ball was Greg Penn. And let's go back. And this is what legs like Robbie Ashford will do to you. He leaves. He steps up in the pocket. Everyone thinks he's becoming a runner, including Garner, whose eyes are in the backfield. He comes up thinking that Ashford's going to take off. Got to be more mindful of the situation there, though. It's third and forever. You cannot come up. Robbie Ashford picking it up with his legs, highly unlikely, but off a scramble drill throw, it can definitely happen. Got to be more mindful that it was third and long. Second and ten. And unable to secure it was Coy Moore. Interesting to see I'll go with like a quarterback draw here because of right on the fringe of field goal range, a little bit deep, but any positive yardage would give you the opportunity to make a kick. Quarterback draw would make some sense, especially if the box count's favorable for run. In this particular case, it doesn't look like it is. Third and ten, pressure off the edge, and it's incomplete as he had to get rid of it and just look for Samuel Shanker. That's exactly what Mount, Matt House, the defensive coordinator for LSU, was thinking. He's thinking, hey, if we come after him, maybe get a sack, and then you're looking at a situation where he's out of field goal range because of the lost yardage play. He dials up all out pressure. They don't have enough guys to block him, and Ashford can't get it out in time before the throw's incomplete. What kind of decision they're going to make here? Take a delay game. What I would do, maybe give your punter a couple extra yards, knowing the field position and how well your defense has played most of the night. Field position would be imperative. 
And timeout is going to be. And that's the first fourth down attempt by either team tonight. And that really surprises me. I mean, I understand very much why you would go for it, but I also, at the same time, know just how this game is played and how your defense is played. Brian Harson's been very aggressive with fourth down throughout the course of this year, so it's not a huge shock, but your defense has been great, and you could potentially pin LSU deep in your own end, potentially inside your own five, with your student section behind, with it's the worst place possible to be on the field for the opposing team. I just think you got to play that more conservative, punt it, and pin LSU deep. So LSU takes over at the 37-yard line. Daniels going to cut back against the drain. A little bit of a stiff arm against Papo as he works his way ahead and goes for six yards. Now, as a result of the aggressive call, LSU has great field position with momentum. See if Jaden Daniels can take advantage of it. Dylan Brooks ready to come in on him, second and four. He keeps it himself, and here he goes, and then sliding down. But a good gainer for Jaden Daniels again, and another first down past midfield to the 45 as he goes for 12 more. And this is just a read on the end man of the line of scrimmage. You see the end man, Derek Hall, go down to stop the run because they've been getting hit inside on the run game time and time again. Jaden Daniels pulls it, and he's out in space. Good read from the quarterback. Williams tackled by Derek Hall. Such an instinctive player is Derek Hall. Read that well. And this time, Derek Hall chases, and then this time you have a defender on the outside. That's Zion Puckett there, so you can't pull it. It's just a good job there overloading. Hall can chase the running back. He makes the play in the backfield, and then you had a guy to account for the quarterback. They clearly saw the zone read coming. It's a good call there by Jeff Schmetting, the defense coordinator. Seven tackles for loss now for Auburn tonight. Second and 11 for Daniels and LSU. This is a quarterback run. And Daniels still on his feet as he goes ahead. It'll be third down and one. As he picks up 10 yards there on second and 11. Good call there by Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator for LSU. Get Daniels running north and south, and now you got two down territory here on third and short. Two tight ends come to the left side. That's Taylor and Cole Taylor, Mason Taylor and Cole Taylor. Man in motion is Thomas on third and one. Williams in the backfield with Daniels, and he'll get the work, and he will get the first down. Good surge there along the front. Got to be alert here if you're Auburn. This, if I'm Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator for LSU, I'm taking a shot here. Fresh set of downs, hands on the hips by the defensive line. This is where I'd go with a heavy play action and see if I can't throw it over the top in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's got Malik Neighbors to the top, split out. Daniels will do just that, looking for that target, but beyond Malik Neighbors. DJ James had coverage of neighbors. That's a dead giveaway down shot. I mean, you get a fresh set, pick up a nice first down. On the defense, number four. Oh, wow. DJ James getting called for it. Oh, man. Definitely had a little contact there early, and the contact was high. If the contact's high around the shoulders, that will usually get called. But, man, wasn't a whole lot there. So after the penalty, first down, a lot of movement on the left side of the line. False start on the offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Remember, they moved things around in the middle of the offensive line. Garrett Dellinger is out injured, had hand surgery on Tuesday, typically plays left guard, had a metal plate inserted, missing just this game. So Frazier now in that position at left guard. Bradford back at right guard and Turner at center. That was a change that happened a couple weeks ago. First and 15. 
Williams is met and driven down at the 20-yard line by Wesley Steiner. That play is still going to be there for LSU if they just continue to commit to it. Obviously, it's a little difficult when you're off schedule with first and 15 because of the pre-snap penalty. You need to continue to try to pound the middle of that defense for Auburn. Second and 11. Emery somehow did that. Flag is down back at the 17. Wesley Steiner came right in on John Emery, and Emery dismissed him. The result of the play is a touchdown. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number 29. I mean, how strong is John Emery? They say he needs to shake off rust. He just shook off a 237-pound linebacker. Just an amazing run for John Emery. Wow. Unbelievable strike. 20-yard touchdown run. Damian Ramos with the extra point. That was some capper to a 63-yard scoring drive. John Emery, welcome back. And if you're Jeff Schmetti, the defensive quarterback, you have exactly what you want. You got your linebacker, your middle linebacker in the backfield. Emery just too strong, though. As Steiner comes in a little bit out of control, Emery just pushes him off to the side and continues to drive. And just an incredible effort there by the talented running back. Just a great, great finish. And LSU with a remarkable response after the questionable fourth and 10 call by the Auburn offense. And LSU roars all the way back, Katie. To Jaden Daniels for kickstarting that drive using his legs. Brian Kelly said this is more about the player than plays this season. We have a lot of plays. We want him to feel as comfortable as possible back there. Jaden said he loves his coach's approach. He works with Denbrock constantly. He asks him, what do you like? What do you hate? We'll take it out if you don't like it. As they carve out a game plan each week, and he always tells them, if we're sluggish, if we need some sparks, let me run it. And we saw that on that last drive. They were sluggish, Katie. They were down 17 to nothing. It took a defensive play to spark them. And with that, Jaden Daniels calmly took control. Put together a long drive. Good one before the half. Now limping a little bit here. You see him after that scoring drive. But all of a sudden, LSU has themselves the lead. They were down 17 to zip map, Barry. Yo, tested a remarkable comeback there for LSU. Here's what we've got going against Clemson and NC State. Here, DJ Uyunglele. They're down 10-6 at that point. He's going to dump it off to Will Shipley. Shipley goes up the sidelines. Initially called a touchdown, reviewed, called back at the one. DJU cleans it up. Right now, they're up on NC State 13-10. Just added another touchdown. Now, Georgia in trouble. Darius Robinson sacks Stetson Bennett. They have to settle for a field goal, still 16-9, Mizzou. That's a remarkable score at Mizzou. And here's a completion now as he goes to Samuel Shanker. Robbie Ashford has found a little something on his birthday, hasn't he? 28 more yards there. As Ashford's over 300 yards passing, Greg. And a really good job finding the matchup there against West Weeks. You got Samuel Shanker, who does a really good job of kind of setting him up and then slipping inside. Fairly easy throw for Robbie Ashford. Only has to travel 10, 12, 13 yards. Hits him right in the middle of the chest and allows John Samuel Shanker to turn up and make nice yards after catch. He's a great athlete. Even played baseball here at Auburn. Was on the team just a couple of years ago. Here's Hunter on the backfield. Throwing a little bit high, but he's able to get the corner. Put down the shoulder and drive ahead. Just effort right there from Jarquez Hunter. Man, just unbelievable drive. A little like Emery on the last play. He obviously makes Ward miss quickly, and then boom, right over Colby Richardson as he finishes falling forward like we've seen so often.
from these Auburn Tiger running backs throughout the course of this season. And this might be a shot down here. Maybe second and short, heavy play action. See if you can't throw it over their head. Hunter is going to spin his way for a first down for Auburn. Reminder, Red River is coming your way next Saturday at noon at ABC. Ah, the old State Fair. They'll fry anything down there. The Oklahoma <laughs> defense that got fried today by TCU. Always a great one. They had some chicken fried bacon at Acre Restaurant from Chef Bancroft last night. Speaking of frying things, here's a trick play. As Hunter was looking to pass and then made the smart option to say, let me tuck this thing, and a flag is down. They might get an illegal formation. I'm not sure that Auburn had enough guys on the line of scrimmage as Camden Brown was off the ball. Illegal formation on the offense, more than four in the backfield. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay first down. As you can see, Jaden Daniels, fresh out of the tent, walking with a little bit of a limp, of course, a little banged up last week. Trying to stay loose on the sideline. Walker Howard coming over to check on him, the true freshman who was one of the big quarterback recruits in the country a year ago. Could it happen on the slide he had, Greg? And as he goes down, kind of awkward. And look at his face. He kind of grimaces there a little bit. It's kind of an awkward slide there as he was going down to give himself up. First and 15. Ashford with time that was deflected right in the middle by Baskerville. He batted that ball, went up high to do it. And great job, too, by Baskerville, whose responsibility is a difficult one. He's just kind of watching the eyes of Robbie Ashford. He's in spy, and Robbie Ashford cannot get it over the extended Baskerville. Great job there by the linebacker, reading the quarterback's eyes, timing his jump, and getting the pass break up. Ashford being chased and throws it away. Allie Gay among the group of LSU Tigers coming in on Robbie Ashford. Of course, knowing Brian Harson's thought process on the last drive in similar spot, I mean, this could be two down territory, even with only a gain of five. I mean, he went forward a moment to go. Maybe you're thinking some type of quarterback run to make fourth down a little more manageable. All right, the 42. They were at the 37 the last time they faced that fourth down. 50% on third down tonight. Going to shallow to Samuel Shanker, and they're right back at that same yard line where it was decision time. The exact same spot on the field. Had a fourth and ten, and they went for it and had a turnover on downs last time. They had the punter, they had the kicker out there. Now remember, they do have an analytics consultant on staff. And they don't hesitate. Here it is, fourth and eleven. Brian Harson didn't hesitate. Going for it on fourth and eleven. Ashford with time going to launch it downfield and that's intercepted it acts as a punt basically Bernard Converse as a flag is down And they're going to get a hold On LSU and that's going to save the day holding on the defense It's an automatic first down Just a massive penalty. I believe it's on Sage Ryan, number 15. As he's running down the field against Dawson. Let's take a look right here. And I mean, don't see a whole lot there, but based on where the flag was thrown, you would get every indication that that was on 
Sage Ryan had a thought a little bit of a questionable call earlier on the pass interference against DJ James right there also a little bit questionable on the holding penalty but life for Auburn final seconds here of the third quarter Hunter goes ahead and closes it out with a little bit of momentum another flag is down man we've had 160 yards of penalties in this game to this point There is no foul for block below the waist. The block is clean. And moving it. Hunter. And then finally driven back by Wingo. As he gets to the 14 yard line. Jaden Daniels has sparked LSU. They were down 17 zip, 21 17 now. But here is Auburn in the midst of an eight play drive that arrives at the fourth quarter, putting them in prime position to try to retake the lead. Ashford. And they couldn't connect with Hunter. Down. Third down and seven, Greg. Tried to get a little rub there to Hunter on the out route, but John Samuel Shaker just couldn't get enough of the LSU defender, which caused the throw to drift a little bit wide. That was well done there by LSU going man coverage there on second and ten. Let's see what we get here. Is Matt House off to bring pressure and see if he heats up the freshman quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. Third and seven. And right at that line, the gain is Coy Moore. Let's see if they mark him maybe a half yard short. You know that Brian Harson's going to go for it in this situation. Last week, he opted to run his running back right behind the right guard. This week, let's see what their short yardage play is going to be. They told us they have changed things up with short yardage this week. Let's see what they opt for. It's Hunter in the backfield. Fourth and one. Quarterback sneak gets an extra push ahead. And a first down for Auburn. And a first and goal here in the fourth quarter. John Samuel Shanker a little slow to get up. Number 25, obviously a huge part of this offense, especially in the red zone, but it looks like he's going to be okay. He provided much of the surge off the left-hand side behind Robbie Ashford for that conversion. Got to think run the football here. You have a young quarterback. The windows are tight. The field's condensed. Your best players are your running backs. You got to think you lean on them and challenge the offensive line in this part of the field. loose Ashford gets it back and is driven out back near the 10 yard line by Greg Penn they went in reverse wrong direction Robbie that's a loss of five tried to go with a little quarterback wrap Shanker's out in front it's well blocked but Robbie just drops the ball as he pulls it out of the belly of his running back as you can see Brian Harson looking on in agony just a critical critical mistake there by the quarterback who's been outstanding throughout the course of the first three quarters that golden band from Tiger Land plays on as their defense is trying to make a stop here meanwhile Auburn trying to retake the lead second and goal now from the 10 jet motion Coymore looking to pass and it's intercepted Harold Perkins can you believe that Auburn got cute and they paid the price pick off Harold Perkins the flag is down late flag is down it's all the way back at the 28 yard line at the end of that play
This team had first and goal. Following the change of possession, we have a dead ball, personal foul on the intercepting team number 99. That 15 yard penalty will be forced half the distance to the goal. It will be first down LSU. After that, we have a sideline warning against Auburn. That is their first warning of the game. Greg, it was just first and goal Auburn. They went in reverse and then did this. And this is all because of discipline by LSU's defense. They tried to get a little corner route there. It was perfectly covered. The pass rush started to get home as Baskerville was there. And Perkins just falls off underneath it and makes a great play. Just great discipline from LSU's defense, not falling victim to the trick play, staying at home, playing their rules, and then making a bad play, a catastrophic play for the Auburn Tigers. So after the interception, after the penalties, LSU takes over at the eight-yard line. And it is loud here at Jordan-Hare. Emory goes ahead for two and a half. Let's go to Matt. Oh, it's getting good across the country. Just a real quick top of the hour navigation for football fans. Clemson and NC State over on ABC. And look at SEC Network. Georgia just kicked another field goal. Still 19-12 there late in the third. Pitt and Georgia Tech. Kind of a snooze fest over on the ACC Network. And ESPNU has action as well. Now, we're going to have a thrilling finish here. And then a lot of eyeballs are going to be turning over what's happening in Mizzou. No doubt about that. Second and six. Emory again, and that time well defensed by Wesley Steiner. If you look at Jaden Daniels, he's definitely favoring that right leg, just not moving around as effortlessly, kind of walking with a bit of a limp. So Auburn needs to keep that in mind as they come after the quarterback, even though he might not be at his very fastest. He's still very capable of being able to pick up first downs in situations like this. You got to be really smart with your pass rush, not get too aggressive. Third and five against this defense in the roar of the crowd, and it's incomplete. Neighbors wanted a flag, and it comes in late. Nehemiah Pritchett was in coverage against Malik Neighbors. interference on the defense number 18. And let's take a look inside leverage with Pritchett. It's a patient route, but as you can see that left arm getting across, that's a good call by the official. He definitely grabs the jersey. And as you can see now, LSU going with Nussmeyer in at quarterback given that Jaden Daniels a little banged up. Kurt Nussmeyer, who saw significant playing time last week against New Mexico when Daniels was injured there as well. And he comes in before the snap. On the offense, number 86. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains first down. That's on Taylor. So Garrett Nussmeyer, the redshirt freshman, the son of Doug Nussmeyer, the former OC at Washington and Bama, Michigan, for the corn quarterback coach of the Dallas Cowboys he was competing for the job very confident got great arm talent kind of guy who thinks he can make any throw into any window now let's see what he offers up here in the fourth quarter of a big game on the road Williams just manages his way to the 13-yard line. Steiner with another tackle. You can see as Nussmeyer went in the ball game, his first snap, they have an illegal procedure where a guy was moving a little bit too quickly. Sometimes when you go from one quarterback to the next, the cadence and the rhythm of the snap count just a little bit different. So you can see just already a slight mistake from LSU that got them off schedule as they try to get back on to set up third and manageable. Second and 12, Nussmeyer to pass. And he gets it over to Booty, who can't control it. It's one that Keyshawn Booty's got to be able to reel in. Would have been a short game, but either way, it's 
star All-American preseason wide receiver. That's one you got to catch. Let's see if they give him another look, or do they look in the direction of Malik Neighbors, who's been a little bit more reliable throughout the course of this season. He's up top in one-on-one, -on -one working against Pritchett. Third down and 12 for Nussmeyer. Coming into the game here in the fourth quarter for Daniels. And Brian Kelly throws his hands up. You can see Brian Kelly all over Nussmeyer as he comes back to the sideline. Got rid of that ball pretty quickly. Might have been able to hold it just a half count longer to throw it on the corner, but opted to deliver it, and the ball sails high. Good stop for the Auburn defense. Great opportunity in special team. Right off of Magnolia Ave, this magnificent campus of Auburn. The loveliest village on the plains has given us a lovely game tonight. We're at 21 17, fourth quarter LSU. Auburn with the ball back. Best starting field position they've had tonight. Ashford, that mesh point got the best of him with Bigsby on the jet motion. And he just had the fall on it as Micah Baskerville was right there. And that is a loss of five. Another significant mistake there, as you can see Jaden Daniels trying to work something out with his lower body. Robbie Ashford, man, I mean, this defense that they're going against here at LSU, way too good, way too equipped to rush the passer to consistently be an obvious passing down. I mean, they have now really shot themselves in the foot the last couple times when they've gotten behind the sticks and gotten off schedule. Second and 14, Ashford, and he is taken down from behind by Roy. Jaqueline Roy, he doesn't get a little bit of Robbie Ashford, who knows? Great play there by Roy. You referenced it. I mean, there was an awful lot of room there for Robbie Ashford. As you can see, Roy just peeling back and making the play. Look how much green grass oh, there right had the best shot. of Robbie Ashford. I mean, no one even on the logo for LSU. That would have been a big gain if not for the great play by Roy. Now a third and 13. Look at B.J. Ojolari standing up, ready to come after him. Top of that defensive line. Third and 13. Ashford with Perkins right in his face. Man, Perkins can fly, Greg. This true freshman is going to be something special in the SEC for years to come. Had the interception moments ago. Yeah, he most definitely is, Tess. I mean, here he is. He's normally going to rush the passer. That's what he does. He's all speed. But instead, he kind of fakes it out, drops back into a spy situation, knowing that Robbie Ashford's a huge threat with his legs, and he closes quickly and forces the incompletion. It's a great job there of spying the quarter at the right time to be able to disrupt the rhythm of the play. So Chapman to punt. frustrated over here on the sidelines meanwhile Brian Kelly told his wide receivers you have to help him out there him being Garrett Nussmeyer he said this is on you guys to get us through make some plays and help our young quarterback so here is Nussmeyer coming into this game at this critical spot getting it to Josh Williams let's go to the studio to Matt Joe Tess look at this unit Harrison Nevis remember he missed a 26 yard game winner last week from 55 yards out He's hit two 50-yard-plus field goals. Missouri with the lead, 22-12. Struggles down here at Auburn last week, but the kid can kick. That is a shocker going on at Mizzou. Second and seven. Williams, as he tries to surge ahead, it's going to be third and one. Huge down here for the Auburn defense. Be interesting to see do they opt to throw it maybe out in the flat to the running back they've done a pretty good job of getting those guys out in the flat and getting an easy completion for their quarterback or do they opt to run the football where they've had success throughout the course of the night especially on some of the vertical handoffs that's sure freshman garrett nussmeyer at quarterback third and two Williams again lowers the shoulders and should have that line to gain. And it is a first down for LSU. 
A nice run there by Williams. Just getting low. Wesley Steiner was in there, but he was just the lower guy. And the leverage that he carried underneath the linebacker was allowed him to kind of surge for just enough to convert on that third and two. Just a great run there on short yardage. Emory comes in at running back. Nussmeyer to pass on first down. Gets it out quickly, but it's dropped by Thomas. Jaden Daniels can only look on right now. Nussmeyer, the Louisiana native, played his high school ball in Texas. Son of a great quarterback and coach, and now on the road in this spot. Second and ten. Here's Pesh. And he struggles to shake free against DJ James. Good job rallying to the football there from the Auburn defense. And a big down here. I mean, the guy on third down. The last few weeks has been Malik Neighbors. If they can get a one-on-one -on -one situation with him against DJ James, will be at the bottom of your screen. That's the direction I'm looking if I'm Nussmeyer, if I get one-on-one. -on -one. Listen to this. Life on the road is an imposing quarterback. Third and eight. Can they convert? Nussmeyer winds up. And incomplete as a flag is down back at the 25-yard line. formation on the offense more than four in the backfield that penalty is declined fourth down coaches don't like sloppy and that was one too i know the penalty would have negated the completion but man i mean neighbors has both hands on it and that's one he's got to reel in but great job there defensively breaking it up and not giving up on the play Ramblett's leg is going to be tired. This is his ninth punt tonight. As he knuckles this into the Auburn sky. Oh, and it's muffed! It is muffed and recovered by LSU! That looked like Bernard Converse was right on top of it. And in the right place at the right time is the cornerback playing specials on the field is that the kick was muffed by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down for the kicking team. First it down, LSU, with five and a half minutes to play. What a huge swing there. As LSU, they've been on the losing end of a game because of a couple muffed punts, and they've been on the winning end, as you can see right there. Keontae Scott trying to run underneath it. That ball was really high. And it just bounces right to Bernard Converse. And you can't advance a muff punt, but just a huge, huge, huge mistake there from the Auburn punt return unit. And LSU is cooking with gas. You can expect them to continue to hand it off now and challenge the inside of that offensive line. And what a dagger to your defense. They did their job. Snap was a little low. The Daniels, and they give a head to Emory. I mean, defense goes out there, does your job. They get the ball back, and then the muff punt, and the recovery, and Garrett Nussmeyer now, and this offense with the opportunity to bleed clock to try to add to the score here. And as we're coming up on five minutes, zero. Emory in the backfield, flanking Nussmeyer, who's in for Jaden Daniels, who was banged up earlier. Emory bottled up. Ball is out! The ball is out! And Jason Jones comes up with it! It looked like Donovan Kaufman wrapping around got in there and forced the fumble! Kaufman came in like a missile on Emery.
and you're just going to see full sellout against the run. Auburn knew his borderline got to have it situation. Kaufman comes right off the edge. Looked like the handoff was relatively clean, but didn't appear as though Emery ever really got it set and close to his body. In comes Kaufman off the edge, pulling it loose. And the Auburn defense steps up yet again. What a massive play there for Auburn and a huge mistake for LSU. So here we go. Two plays after the muff punt was recovered by LSU. And Auburn was in tough shape. They get that and the offense is back out there. Just under five minutes to go. Robbie Ashford on his 20th birthday. Can he come up with something big? Speaking of big, here goes Bixby. Crossing midfield, first down Auburn. And they've got Uncle Mo right here. Momentum has arrived at Jordan Hare. And a great job by the left side of this offensive line. You're going to see Serge Stutz, number 62. And Zier also... John Samuel Shanker on the end, just getting in the way just enough to allow for the cutback lane for Tank Bigsby. Just a great run there by the running back. Right after the fumble recovery. And here goes Bigsby. As he makes his way to the 43. What's up, Matt? Right back to you, Joe Tess. Want to just keep you quickly updated. Georgia Mizzou after converting on a fourth and one. Kendall Milton puts it in for the dogs right now. 22-19, nine and a half in the fourth quarter. Don't forget, Pac-12 after dark, Jordan Addison, USC, and Arizona State coming up after you go final at Auburn. It's a wild night in the SEC. We got Georgia coming back against Mizzou, and we got Auburn with the ball under four minutes to play after the dueling turnovers and now life again. Hunter as he lunges ahead, and he's close to that line of game. Roy had to make the tackle. They're going to give it to him. And my goodness, the offensive line, this drive, two of the last three plays, I mean, just looked like a completely different group. They were in unison. They were pushing LSU defenders off the line. Have to wonder, is maybe fatigue becoming a bit of an issue for the Tigers wearing the purple and gold? Not much there at all for Bigsby. Greg Penn with the tackle. We're under three minutes to play. It's understandable that Auburn wants to continue to try to run the football. Their running backs are their best, most reliable players. But at some point right now, LSU is just totally selling out in the front against the run. The linebackers are fully committed. The secondary defenders are triggering quickly. At some point, Auburn's going to have to keep them honest with a throw downfield or a back shoulder to one of their wide receivers. Second and 11, Ashford. He rifles that in. Wow! Look at this! Greg Brooks just ripping it away! Three dynamic turnovers late here in this game. Back and forth, these defenses go, and now it's the purple and gold Tigers with momentum again looking to close this out no you can't believe it can you I mean just an absolute roller coaster throw was on the mark but the defensive play was just so good as Greg Brooks broke on that hitch that they've thrown time and time again trying to get it right over the middle to Coy Moore who's sitting up and they've thrown it and hit that route several times tonight this time Greg Brooks really commits to it gets aggressive with it and pulls it away from the wide receiver Coy Moore just an incredible play there by the LSU defensive back and Nussmeyer and Williams in the backfield. 
trying to burn just over two minutes and seal this thing, and that helps with Josh Williams. So just pause and think about the last two minutes and 46 seconds. Muff punt. Fumble. Interception. Don't you just love the SEC? And you can see NC State struggling on the road at Clemson. They have the ball. And Kentucky, how well, how far will they fall given the fact that they made countless errors throughout the course of that game? I think some people might even still respect Kentucky after that performance. They played so poorly and yet still almost got a win on the road. Speaking of errors, our last three minutes of all these turnovers here. And now LSU with a four-point lead coming up on two minutes to play. Auburn has the one timeout remaining. And they'll use it here. And we will take the break with them. We've had them up front, the fumble, the interception by that guy. And we'll take a short break. Here, Arizona State at six ranked USC coming up in just a couple of minutes. Nine remaining in the game. Now smile the quarterback in for Jaden Daniels, who left banged up. Williams on third and three, and he will drive ahead for a first down. Auburn doesn't have any timeouts remaining. What a scenario here in this fourth quarter. Auburn hasn't scored in second halves of games lately. They only have nine total points in the second half of the last three games. Last time they scored in this game was 938 before halftime. They had a 17 zip lead. LSU stormed all the way back. And victory formation is coming for LSU. This was a wild one with all the turnovers down the stretch. And we want to remind everybody that we encourage you to help everybody affected by Hurricane Ian. Donate to the redcross.org slash ESPN. Help the Red Cross prepare, respond, and help people recover from this disaster. It has been a trying week for so many of us, especially on this crew. We want to send our best to Andy and Tim, who Tim's in the booth with us. Andy's the lead audio. They're on the west coast of Florida. They're dealing with just horrors there with their homes. We've been reaching out to them. They were unable to be with us this week to take care of their families and their properties. Greg, as you know, I live in Naples, Florida. You've come down and spent time with my wife and family down there at our home in Naples, Florida. And it just reminds you in times like this, weeks like this, life is fickle. Yeah. And you have to sit back. I sat back all Wednesday not knowing if my home would still be standing. Uh, by the grace of God, it is. And we're very blessed. A couple streets over, it's washed away like a river. You don't know what life is going to bring you, but you do know where you're centered. And I'm centered with you, my friends, my family, and loved ones. And that's all that matters when you go through a week like this. And we want to send our love to Tim and Andy. What a win for LSU. And what a stretch they've got coming up. We talked about it at the beginning of the show of saying, here comes the SEC for Brian Kelly and these Tigers. Auburn tonight on the road. Tennessee at Florida, Ole Miss. It's going to get hot and heavy. Of course, they're going to want to find out about the health of Jaden Daniels, the starting quarterback. Anytime you go on the road in this conference under the lights and you win, that's a good one. Absolutely. It wasn't perfect, but they did enough. They took advantage of all the mistakes, and they were the... They were the team that made fewer tonight. That ultimately gave them victory. Feel great.